The science of anthropogenic global warming is well over 150 years old. In fact, by the end of the 19th century, the primary mechanisms of how global warming could occur, and specifically how humans would contribute to it, were already understood and had been verified both experimentally and through scientific observation. In 1824, French physicist Joseph Fourier proposed that the Earth's atmosphere could act as an insulator increasing global temperature. The most important observation made by Fourier was that human activity, combined with natural processes, would accelerate global warming. It's worth reading his entire statement. Quote, the establishment and progress of human society and the action of natural powers may, in extensive regions, produce remarkable changes in the state of the surface, the distribution of waters, and the great movements of the air. Such effects, in the course of some centuries, must produce variations in the mean temperature for such places. End quote. This was a groundbreaking conclusion, Firstly, because it identified an atmospheric feedback mechanism by which global temperature could increase over time. And secondly, because it stated explicitly that human activity could contribute significantly to this mechanism and therefore increase the speed and extent of global warming. These two premises laid the foundation of anthropogenic climate change science and over the next 130 years they would be proved true repeatedly by an overwhelming accumulation of scientific experimentation and observation. From 1827 to 1838, Claude Pouillet built on Fouillet's work and was the first to propose that both carbon dioxide and water vapour were greenhouse gases which could trap infrared radiation within the atmosphere, causing global warming. Although Pouillet demonstrated this mathematically, he did not validate his model experimentally. In 1856, American women's rights activist and scientist Eunice Newton Foote concluded from her own experiments that carbon dioxide has an insulating property which can increase the Earth's atmospheric temperature. Although her conclusion was correct, her actual results did not support her conclusion. However, that's a subject for another video. Check the links in the description. Several years later, in 1859, English physicist John Tyndall's experiments finally proved that both water vapour, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2, are greenhouse gases capable of raising global temperature. In an extensive 40-page paper published in 1861, Tyndall acknowledged the work of earlier scientists, cited previous relevant experiments, formed a specific hypothesis, and described in detail his own experiments, which he carried out with new instruments made specifically for the purpose. This was the first definitive experimental evidence for the greenhouse gas theories of Fouillet, Pouillet and Foote. In 1886, Samuel Pierpont Langley's experiments decisively proved Fouillet's greenhouse effect theory was correct. Ten years later, in 1896, Swedish physicist and chemist Svant Arrhenius used Langley's data to estimate the extent to which increased carbon dioxide levels would raise the global surface temperature through the greenhouse effect. This work by Arrhenius was the next major breakthrough in climate change science, providing a mathematical formula for predicting the relationship between atmospheric carbon dioxide levels and global temperature increase. His formula is still used today. In 1896, Swedish physicist Arvid Hög Bum, who worked with Arrhenius, was the first to provide calculations demonstrating that human activities were increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide. Using these calculations, Arrhenius predicted that doubling atmospheric carbon dioxide would raise global temperature by 5 to 6 degrees, but also calculated that at current industry levels it would take several thousand years and that the ocean would act as a carbon sink to offset the effect. So by the end of the 19th century, it was understood that human activities could increase atmospheric carbon dioxide levels to the point that global warming could occur. However, there was no concern since it was assumed that this would not take place for thousands of years. Part two of this series will demonstrate that this conclusion turned out to be dangerously wrong.